Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, in boxing, all of us have opinions, right? You're hearing Andre Ward, fresh out of the ring with Terrence Crawford, saying flatly that nobody beats Crawford right now. Apparently, Crawford impressed the Hall of Famer that much, right? There's a great interview online. It's Chris Maddox interviewing Timothy Bradley, who himself had Crawford as a sparring partner, has been in the ring with Crawford. And Bradley makes the point that when Crawford moved up to 147 pounds, he took on Jeff Horn, a big physical guy who had manhandled Manny Pacquiao, right? Wasn't, you know, the most skilled guy, but was very physical. And of course, Bradley points out that Terrence Crawford handled him. You have Eddie Hearn talking about Madrimov. He feels that people are sleeping on Madrimov. That Crawford, who's moving up in weight to 154 pounds, is going to find that it's a step too far. That Madrimov is ready for him. Now, let me say I'm going to save the actual betting strategy for my premium subscribers here. I owe them that. But let's just talk about who we agree with in all of this, right? And let me also say, too, some of the views I state here, for example, I just did a Jake Paul video a few days ago, and I mentioned the fact that Jake Paul uh, looks like he's world class right now at cruiserweight. And since I made that video, a sanctioning body has announced a Jake Paul, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight for a minor title at Cruiser, right? So we're not afraid here to break with the crowd. I'm going to break with the crowd right here on this fight involving the fighter I believe is the best in the sport pound for pound. But understand, this fight has another question, right? Yes, Crawford's the best in the sport pound for pound, but we understand at some point, the best pound for pound could be in the wrong weight class, right? In other words, none of us expect Crawford to jump up to heavyweight and to suddenly be handling business against Usyk, Fury, Joshua, uh, Dubois, right? Jili Zhang. We understand that you can be the best in the sport pound for pound, but at some point, you're swimming in the wrong pool. Is Crawford swimming in the wrong pool here? Now, here's what I will say on the fight. The guy he's fighting, Madrimov, and this isn't, this isn't the consensus opinion, but it's mine. He's offensively blessed. Right, folks? This is the guy who can throw a lot of punches with both hands. Right? He can come up on you like Bradley's suggesting and try to be alpha up close. Right? He can try to be Errol Spence. But this is also the guy who has ring coverage. Understand, this guy's left hook travels. Understand, this guy's right hand, he can fully extend it on punches. Let's also say another thing that I believe to be the truth here. Understand, Madrimov is in his 20s. Crawford, as great as he is, is on the other side of 35. And you know which side I'm talking about. Folks, in terms of athleticism, Madrimov is the better athlete than Terrence Crawford. Right? All I'm saying is, on one half of the aisle, you have a guy who is offensively blessed. And he's the bigger man. At least he's had the history of fighting bigger men 
over Crawford. Let me point out too, and I have some highlights from fights that Madrimov has had in my favorites folder right now. What I want people to do is to look at a fight he had a couple fights ago against the Southpaw, Igbukwe. Right? That fight went the distance. What I want people to do is to look at the flow of the fight. Look at the punch selection. Here you have Madrimov, who they tell us is a righty, and he fights most of the time right-handed. Right? In actuality, believe it or not, Madrimov is a switch. This is a fight between two ambidextrous fighters. Well, here's Madrimov fighting a southpaw who looks bigger than him. And Madrimov, for all the punches the guy can throw, he's including in his repertoire against a southpaw. In other words, the southpaw's right hand is up on the left side of your face, right? The southpaw's right hand is close to you. Madrimov in that fight is throwing a left uppercut. He does it repeatedly, right? Think about it. In other words, Madrimov not afraid of the fact that this guy has his jab hand right by him, that he's fighting a southpaw. In other words, this isn't the orthodox fighter who you know, gets thrown by the fact that he's not fighting a righty who would have his jab hand over on the right side of Madrimov's face. Here he's fighting a lefty. And he's still throwing power punches. In fact, he's throwing dangerous power punches. You have to commit to these uppercuts. Right? You have to lean into the guy to throw these uppercuts. Here, the guy is throwing the uppercut on the jab side of his opponent. Crawford, of course, is a lefty who can fight righty. Right? Let me make another point, too. In the Ibakwe fight, and keep in mind, Crawford has a knockout string going for several years here. You need to look closely at this fight. Right? Against the southpaw, you will notice that Madrimov figures out that he cannot get the stoppage. This is my interpretation of the film. Right? Madrimov figures out that he cannot get the stoppage. So he then starts just moving around the pocket. What I want people to do is they look at the highlight film. You don't have to watch the whole fight. It's just look at Madrimov's foot movement. This is when you realize he's the superior athlete to Terence Crawford. Look at the foot movement over the last six rounds of his fight against Ibakwe. Right now, let's talk about the big problem he has. And this problem might be fatal against Terence Crawford. Understand, Madrimov is such a good athlete that he drops his hands. Right? You'll notice he completely believes that he has figured out the rhythm of the fight. And he reaches a point where if he decides you can't touch him, he'll just be around the ring close to you but looking at your arms, and he won't even put a hand up. In other words, this is the guy who's offensively blessed, who's also defensively reckless. Right now, the question is whether Crawford can survive the offensive onslaught. And this guy hits hard with both hands. Let me tell you, the southpaw guy goes the distance with him, right? Three guys have gone the distance with him. He has a 70% knockout ratio. Right? But understand, the southpaw goes the distance with him, and you're wondering how. Because Madrimov is landing home run shots with both hands. Right? The question here is whether 
Crawford can survive the offensive onslaught. And this is one of the toughest Crawford opponents in Crawford's entire career. Can Crawford survive the offensive onslaught to take advantage of Madrimov's defensive recklessness? That's the question in this fight. Right? It's a good fight. It's a very good fight. Let me just say too, Crawford in interviews, and we should all be aware of this, is saying now that fighting Canelo would make the most sense. Now, Crawford's fighting this fight at 154. Folks, he would have to add 14 pounds to fight Canelo, or at least be comfortable with the idea of an opponent coming in against him at 168 pounds, right? If Crawford is as old school as I think he is, he might decide that he doesn't have to gain the weight that he can win the fight at a lighter weight than Canelo. Right? Let me just say this, though. Floyd Mayweather was a freak athlete. Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion, I understand there are other opinions out there, but in my opinion, Mayweather beat Canelo effortlessly. Right? By a margin. But understand, he was simply too fast simply too athletic for Canelo, right? It translates on film. You can look at the Canelo Mayweather fight, folks. It's jaw-dropping every time you see it, how much faster than Canelo Mayweather is. And keep in mind, that's an older Mayweather. We're not even talking about the guy who took the title from Hernaro Hernandez. Well, understand, Canelo's other official loss was to Dimitri Bevel. Now, Bevel's on his best behavior in that fight, right? Bevel has his defense ready, is prepared to defend himself. But as that fight progresses, you start to notice Bevel let his hands go, right? I would argue, as much as I am impressed with Terrence Crawford, he does not have the hand speed the physical gifts of either Mayweather or Bevel. Right? And so understand, I think Crawford is more than competitive against Canelo. But I do believe it's going to be a different dynamic. It won't be Mayweather coming inside. By the way, this to me is some of the most jarring footage of any Canelo fight. Mayweather, first two rounds, comes inside on Canelo. And it's just too fast. In other words, Mayweather's even bending down. He's throwing jabs to Canelo's body. And Canelo can't do anything about it. Right? When Canelo tries to respond, Floyd just jumps back outside. And yes, Mayweather's feet are that fast compared to Canelo's feet. Crawford's a different fighter. Right now, Crawford has his own thing going on, right? I keep saying this guy is Clint Eastwood. Right? He's the quiet guy at the bar. He's not trying to bother anybody. He's just minding his own business. But if there's a gunfight, you don't want to be on the other side. Right? You understand if, if things go down in the bar, Eastwood's going to handle his business. Right, even older Eastwood, out of the Westerns, right, in San Francisco, playing Dirty Harry, you understood once the bullet started flying, Dirty Harry was going to handle business. That's who Crawford is, right? No one seems to realize <laughs> that he is one of the sport's most reliable knockout punchers, right? Crawford just does not enter the room with the swag of a Gili Zhang. Right? That's just not who he is. This is the quiet stranger. Right? So, Crawford is his own fighter. He's different than Mayweather. He's different than Bevel. If he fights Canelo, it's going to be a different fight. Canelo, of course, 
is defensively blessed. I would argue that Canelo's left hook is the best punch in a fight between himself and Crawford. As I make this video, I can't even tell you how Crawford's going to fight Canelo because Crawford reinvents himself for every fight. Certainly, Crawford realizes that trying to hit Canelo in the head is going to be damn near impossible. Right? I'm sure Crawford also realizes that if Canelo is on his front foot, Crawford needs to back away from the pocket. The thing with Canelo is Canelo has more foot speed than you realize. Look at the infamous Jamel Charlo fight. Right? Canelo is tracking Charlo. Right? Canelo's not the slugger who just stands there. Right? Canelo also has a back foot that you don't see a lot of. But he does have problems catching up with guys who move. Think Caleb Plant. Remember, that fight makes it to the later rounds. Right? Who have some hand speed and who have some slickness. The Jaime Munguias of the world have no shot against Canelo, in my opinion. Right? The guys who do have to box a little bit. Have to move a little bit. Have to be slick with it. Terrence Crawford has that part of his game. Right? But this fight, I'm just flatly saying here, Madrimov is a better athlete than both Canelo and Crawford. Right? Madrimov is offensively blessed. In other words, you're talking about not just hand speed, but you're talking about an assortment of punches in both hands. Right? When he goes southpaw, you don't even know that he's not a southpaw. Right? Let's just say, too, that left hook is Joe Fraser type ring coverage. Uh, has Joe Fraser type ring coverage. Right? And his stuff is sudden. In other words, he starts to move his left shoulder. It could be a left hook up top. It could be the left uppercut I've been talking about. Right? So this guy's offensively blessed. I just wonder if he has the defense, since he drops his hands a lot, to deal with one of boxing's premier closers. Those are my thoughts. Um, I think Timothy Bradley, who's great, is off here. Uh, whenever I hear anyone say, as Andre Ward has, that nobody's going to beat Crawford right now, right? That nobody is going to beat a fighter. You know, deep in my gut, I feel styles make fights. I feel even the greats have boogeymen, right? I'd take Thomas Hearns without blinking over Floyd Mayweather, who... I admit, is a great fighter, right? Simply because of length. In fact, let's mix it up here, right? I mentioned Thomas Hearns. I think Crawford, and we're here talking about Canelo, right? Madrimov, I think Crawford would have a very hard time with Hamza Shiraz because Shiraz has some Hearns in him. In other words, great jab, length, can stay outside, doesn't have to risk being in the pocket with a smaller guy, right? Can bludgeon him to the point where the fight doesn't start until you find a way to get by Shiraz's left. And keep in mind, Shiraz, even though he's really a lefty, has a right hand, right? I believe that you can look at the great fighter and you can figure out who can beat him, right? You understand certain matchups are problematical. Those are my thoughts. We're seeing it with Fury Usyk. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me just say, if Madrimov drops his hands early, sure, there's a chance that he gets caught by Crawford, who's a closer, who can target parts of your body. You remember Crawford targeting Kell Brook's eyes. Kell Brook entered the fight with eye concerns after the Errol Spence fight. 
Uh, Crawford, of course, comes out as surgical in targeting a guy, right? I'm sure Crawford looked at these Madrimov films, sees Madrimov dropping his hands and thinks, okay, great, that's the moment. I'm going to take care of him, right? But don't sleep on the idea that Crawford is facing an offensively blessed fighter, right? A guy who, um, you know, just stopped an unbeaten uh, fighter, Urbanov, some name like that, right? Crawford is in against an offensive juggernaut. He's going to have to deal with that offense on his way to trying to land clever counters. He's also going to have to prove to Madrimov that Madrimov is wrong in terms of his sense of spacing. I mean, this is a guy, folks, who will drop his hands when he's right around the pocket. Right? He believes that much in his judgment on not just spacing, but sequencing. In other words, he drops his hands when he feels, okay, this guy is not, because of the sequence, in a position to hit me with even a left jab, right? Because he's dropping his hands against a Bakwe, who's a southpaw, a slick southpaw, right? So this guy firmly believed, while being around the pocket, I can drop my hands because I've just hurt the guy, <laughs> and the guy's left hand is out of position to hit me with a jab. Or to hit me with anything stiff. Think about it. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.